So I've done a few videos on this channel so far using the free video and audio processing and recompression tool FFmpeg as part of a video production process, especially if you're sort of on the lower end or just starting out and you don't have a ton of money to invest in, you know, lots of expensive software to do fancy things. Now, some of those things that I did included stuff like showing you how to do machine learning based noise reduction on recorded audio as a pre-processing step or optimizing your compressed deliverables with objective quality metrics, specifically video uh, Netflix VMAF, uh, to get the best possible deliverables or to at least understand what changes you're doing in files or in your export settings, how they're affecting things. Now, in both of those cases, the processing that was done in FFmpeg was done using what they call filters. And subsequently, I have gotten a few requests to talk about how you combine and use filters and how you set up more complex filtering operations. And that's what I want to talk about today. So let's start with the where and how you get FFmpeg to actually do something with a filter, because you have to do this outside of just telling it where to get a file and where to save it. Now, being that FFmpeg is a command line tool, it does take your commands as basically just a huge string of text. And you provide that string of text that tells it how to do everything after what they call a command line argument or switch. Now in FFmpeg, specifically for dealing with filters, there are three of these arguments or switches that you will use depending on what you need to do. All of these are some variation on the minus filter sort of style or a shortened form of it. Now, FFmpeg treats filters two different ways. There are simple filters that are ones that have a single input and a single output. And we'll come back to talking about the difference between simple and complex in more detail in a second. But with these simple filters, then you simply use the minus filter argument with an optional colon and a stream specifier added on at the end. If you just use minus filter without any specifier after it, FFmpeg will do its best to try to determine what stream, that is the video, the audio, the subtitles, or any of the other things that can be stuffed in a video file, it should apply your supplied filter graph to. So which filters it should use, where and how. Now, if you append a stream specifier like colon video, then FFmpeg will select the default video stream or the first video stream. Colon audio will be the first audio stream and colon followed by a number will cause FFmpeg to select whatever stream is that number in the file. So colon two would cause it to select the second stream in the file, regardless of what it is, and try to apply your filters to it. Now, there are also a couple of shorthand or shortcut ways you can do this to save a little bit of typing. These are minus FV, which is the same as minus filter colon video, and minus FA, which is the same as minus filter colon audio. That said, a uh, word of caution here, probably avoid the shorthands if you're using this in a script, but they're fine if you're just doing a one-off thing. Now, for more complex filtering, that is where you want to use multiple inputs or outputs, then you need to use the minus filter underscore complex switch ends instead. So let me give you an example of where all of this sort of shakes out. If you just wanted to, for example, change the volume of an audio stream, like make the volume in your video louder, you could do this by simply applying the filter like minus FA volume equals volume equals 1.5. This would increase the volume by 50%. However, if you wanted to do something more complicated, say take uh, audio file or audio recording in your video, create three separate versions of it, one with noise reduction, one with no noise reduction, and one with some other kind of filtering applied, then you would need to use the filter underscore complex option instead of the filter audio option. So that's how you get FFmpeg to use filters or on your software or on your video or audio tracks. Now let's talk about how you combine filters into things to do things more complicated than just what you can specify in a single operation. 
Now, to fully understand this, we have to talk about three terms. The terms are filter, filter chain, and filter graph. A filter is the individual thing that does some form of audio or video processing. For example, the ARNNDN filter implements a recumbent neural network noise reduction for audio streams. The filter specified, or the filter that's used, is specified by a filter name, and that name is optionally followed by the arguments that you need for it to do what you want it to do, basically how you configure it. So in previous videos, and just a second ago, I talked about the ARNNDN filter. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about a couple of other ones such as high pass, low pass, and equalizer. Those are all example of, uh, examples of filter names in FFmpeg. And as I said, most filters also take one or more arguments that you use to configure how they actually work. These are specified in a colon separated list form where you provide a key equals a value pair for each of the arguments following after the filter's name, which is followed by an equal sign. So filter name, equal sign, key equals value, colon, the next key equals value, so on. So for example, let's take a look quickly at the high pass filter. It takes a number of options, but the most important one to us as end users is probably going to be the cutoff frequency. This is the point where it starts attenuating signals under that frequency. If you want to roll off the low frequency hum that you may have recorded due to audio AC or fan noise or something like that, then you'll want to set the uh, cutoff frequency of a high pass filter to something like 70 or 80 hertz instead of FFmpeg's default of 3000. And you would do that using a command like this. Now, as an aside, FFmpeg also supports specifying their filter arguments without the key in the key value pair. That's the frequency part in this example. If you do this, the arguments are specified in the order that they are listed in the documentation. But I'm going to make the big thing here is while I'm telling you you can do it, I'm going to strongly recommend that you don't do this as what you're doing is going to be very less obvious or what you're telling the filter to do is going to be very less obvious down the road. This is especially important if you're using these filter commands in a script file where you're processing stuff or you're having a computer automatically process stuff. That script file you might not come back to for months or maybe even years. And when you come back to it, you're going to then probably have forgotten all of the details. And when you take out sort of, you, you simplify things, you take out those key value pairs, it becomes significantly more difficult to just understand what your script is doing. So that's one filter. We can take one or more filters and combine them. Well, technically one filter is just one filter, but more than one filter, I should say, can be combined into what FFmpeg calls a filter chain. And a chain is a group of filters that are run sequentially on the same data stream. So the same audio, the same video, whatever it is you selected goes through all of these filters in sequence. The filters themselves in a chain are specified the same way as they are for an individual filter. All you have to do to make filters into a chain is separate them with a comma. So you would have the first filter, its arguments, comma, the second filter, its arguments, and so forth. So for example, FFmpeg has an equalizer filter and the equalizer filter acts basically as a single point in a parametric equalizer. So if you're familiar with the parametric equalizer in software like DaVinci Resolve's Farlight Audio Engine or Adobe Audition, where you have the five or six points that you can move around to visually uh, adjust the equalization of your audio, well, to do that in FFmpeg, you would need to chain together five or six equalizer filters to make the same effect. Therefore, to create, for example, a five point parametric equalizer with FFmpeg, you need to pass the signal through five separate equalizer filters, each configured to do what each individual point was supposed to do. So for example, you'd do something that looked like this, or you'd use something that looked like this. 
Those repeated equalizer statements separated by commas create what FFmpeg calls a filter chain, and they provide the same functionality as if you had a single parametric equalizer with all of those points and configurations. Now, Ultimately, all of the filtering that happens in FFmpeg is done through what FFmpeg calls a filter graph. And a filter graph basically takes one or more filter chain, and that can be made up of one or more filters, and attaches inputs and outputs to them to do the actual processing. So it knows where the signal's coming from and where it's going to. Now, filter chains are separated in a filter graph with semicolons. So you can have multiple chains doing different things, and you separate them as a, with semicolons for each of the different chains. Now, in the simplest case, such as when using the single uh, or the simple minus filter style commands, these chains will only have a single input. For example, the audio stream from the file that you're reading, and a single output, the audio stream that's going to the file that you're writing. However, when you use the minus filter underscore complex argument, you can create separate paths. Those paths can be routed to their own outputs. You can combine multiple inputs together, so you could dub audio over a video file, for example. You can even fork and recombine things in, a, in the filtering process itself, and then save that out to a file. So, uh, for example, um, you could do something like mid-tone contrast adjustment. If you're familiar with doing that in Photoshop, you have to split into a high-pass filter and a bunch of different things. Well, you could do that in FFmpeg on video through a filter graph using filter complex. Now, an example of where I use the minus filter underscore complex function in my workflows is in my noise reduction process that I use for basically all the audio that I record here in the studio. In that process, I take three audio streams. Uh, I record three streams for everything that I do. So one is the HDMI audio that's output from my camera. One is a lav mic audio channel, and one is a boom mic audio channel. Not all of these are used. I then, in FFmpeg, split each of those streams into three separate copies. One copy has no processing done to it at all. The other two copies have noise reduction done using that AR and NDN filter, but with different models, one for a quieter environment, one for a more noisy environment. And the reason I do this is so that I have basically options after the fact. I have, if my quiet environment model doesn't seem to sound good or has issues, I can go to the noisy model. If that doesn't work, I can go to the original model and perhaps use different software like voice isolation and DaVinci Resolve or something like that. In the end, I end up with a filter graph that looks something like this. I've omitted a couple of things just to kind of condense it down and make it more readable. Now, based on what we've talked about in terms of filters and filter chains and arguments and all of that, we should be able to kind of whittle our way through this and reasonably follow what's going on. The labels, which I haven't talked about, the ones in square brackets, are either stream selectors or individual stream labels. So that initial zero colon one is saying, take stream one from source zero, which in my case is the first audio stream in a video in the video files that I'm passing. That then is taken and run through a filter called a split, which is short for audio split, which in turn outputs three separate streams with their own labels. Now, the names that I've added here are arbitrary. Uh, my shorthand is simply that I use the stream number so I can keep track of which stream things belong to, an underscore I for internal, meaning it's only going to be used in the filter graph, or O for output, meaning that that's going to be something I'm going to use to write to a file. Then, for those two copies that I am processing, the I1 and I2, I feed them into two separate instances of the ARNNDN noise reduction filter, which again are configured with different options. And this is where I've omitted things to make things clearer. I've cut the paths out so that you don't have huge paths to the different models. Now, 
Those are filter chains independently, those AR and NDN options. And the filters or the filter chain, the end of it, there's only one filter in it, but the end of it outputs to another labeled stream identifier that is used in the output part of my FFmpeg command to actually write that processed information to a file. Now, if I wanted to, I could apply, say, further equalization to any one of those streams by adding additional filters to one or more of the sp specific filter chains. For example, if I wanted to roll off frequencies below 100 hertz for everything that's coming in, I could do something like this, putting the high pass filter at the very beginning before the audio split, and then it will be processed first. Alternatively, I could choose to apply that filtering to only a single noise reduced output. And for that, to do that, I would do something like this, moving that high pass filter to the process of one of the noise reduced outputs or to one of the noise reduced outputs filter chains. Now, ultimately, I use those S number underscore O number stream identifiers to create separate wave files for each of the different processing modes. And this is a little bit beyond what I wanted to talk about in this video or intended to cover this video, but the short of it is, is that you can specify any stream that you create in a filter complex. In fact, anything that's not remapped or rejoined in the filter complex has to be set up with a map argument or minus map argument to write that out to disk. You can't just leave things floating. So that's how you kind of deal with filters, chains, graphs, etc. in FFmpeg, how you tie things together. With that said, the short of it is that FFmpeg is of course incredibly capable and powerful software. But of course, being it is a command line tool written by programmers, I would argue largely for programmers, this is also far from the most user-friendly thing to configure. Now, if you are interested in going down this rabbit hole, the first thing that I would absolutely recommend you do is head over to the documentation at ffmpeg.org slash documentation.html and read as much of it as you can. The filters and command argument switch uh, documentation is absolutely critical to being able to understand and set things up yourself. I also want to point out that in many cases, you're going to need a little bit more of an understanding of what's happening or specifically the math behind some of the audio and video processing that's being done to be able to effectively use many of the filters in FFmpeg. This is certainly true for things like the equalizer filter. You can copy a lot of things straight from, for example, Resolve or uh, Audition or Audacity's filters, but you need to kind of understand what you're doing. So meaning, in short, basically, if you're just used to adjusting things by ear or by looking at your DAW's parametric equalizer settings, accomplishing the same thing in FFmpeg is going to be a much bigger struggle, well, unless you copy the settings that you used in your DAW directly over, and generally you can do that. Also, if you're considering using FFmpeg with complex filter graphs, like I have been here, I strongly recommend writing out your filters and filter graph in a simple text editor like Notepad or TextEdit, where you can add new lines and tabs and separate things out and logically follow the process that you're routing your signals through before you try to combine everything into a new line free, space free, et cetera, piece of text that you have to feed into the FFmpeg command line. Uh, it just makes it considerably easier to take care of. So with that said, that's the sort of the short of it for, or the long of it for that matter, for dealing with FFmpeg filters and what I found works best for me in that process. That said, I hope you found this useful or at least interesting. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button. Also, if this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Finally, if you'd like to help and support this channel, you can help us for free by liking this video, sharing it with your friends, and leaving a comment with your experiences. Likewise, you can support us by hitting that thanks button or buying yourself something you've always wanted from one of the affiliate links in the description below. 
And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.